In the last video, we talked about how to calculate geometric probabilities. Uh, and in this uh, video, we're going to extend the idea a little bit farther. And we're going to talk about how to calculate the expected value, the standard deviation, uh, and one additional probability that's related to a geometric random variable. Just as with the binomial distribution, calculating the mean and the standard deviation of a geometric uh, distribution is pretty straightforward. The formulas aren't too complicated. To calculate the mean mu, all you have to do is take 1 over p, where p is your probability of success. And that's all there is to uh, finding the expected value for a geometric random variable. Um, for the standard deviation of a geometric random variable, again, we're going to use the symbol sigma. That's going to be the square root of 1 minus p, again, where p is your probability of success, divided by p squared. So again, not too bad. Uh, one other formula that you want to be familiar with is the probability, not just that x equals n, where uh, n is the uh, number of the first trial that results in a success, uh, but rather the probability that x is greater than n, meaning it takes more than n trials to uh, get your first success. Uh, in this case, the probability that x is greater than n, this is also a pretty simple formula, it's just 1 minus p to the nth power. And if you think about it, uh, this formula makes some sense because we know that if p is the probability of success, then 1 minus p is the probability of failure. So if we're looking at the probability that the first success occurs after the nth trial, that means that we've had n failures, which is why we have to raise the probability of failure 1 minus p to the nth power. So let's do a quick example. Uh, let's go back to um, our scenario where we are rolling a die. And we want to uh, find the, let's see, we're rolling a die. We want to calculate the average number of rolls it's going to take for us to roll our first, uh, let's say, our first four. Uh, we know that the probability of success, P, is going to be equal to one-sixth because, of course, there are uh, six possible outcomes. Only one is the one that we're interested in. So then um, our expected value for um, the number of rolls it's going to take for us to get our first success is given by 1 over p from the formula we just saw, which in this case would be 1 over 1 sixth, which is just equal to 6. So we're going to expect that it will take us 6 rolls on average to get our first 4. To calculate our standard deviation, uh, we'll again just use our formula. So it's going to be the square root of uh, 1 minus p, which is going to be 5 6 divided by p squared, which is going to be 1 6 squared. Uh, if we simplify this down a little bit, uh, this is going to be 5 times 6 squared over 6 which just ends up being, uh, the sixes cancel out, so this is the square root of 5 times 6, which is 30. Uh, and you can figure out what that is um, if you want to find the decimal form of it. So there's how you calculate a mean and a standard deviation. Let's say uh, we want to know what is the probability that it will take us more than six rolls to get our first four. Because we calculated on the last side that we expect on average it will take us six rolls to get our first four. Well, what's the probability that it will take us more than six rolls? So this is the situation we're going to use that uh, third formula that I showed you a minute ago. We're going to do uh, one minus p, which again is one sixth, and raise that to the n power. Oops, not n in this case, the nth power in this case uh, would be six trials. And since one minus one six is five six, what we're really doing here is raising five six to the sixth power. And let me do that calculation. And it turns out that that is point three three 
four nine. So there's a uh, about a thirty three point five percent chance that it will take us more than six rolls to get our first four.